serving God and he's using you, you write stuff down, but then the Holy Ghost puts in what he wants. Amen? So we have this target on him now. This is what the enemy sees. You can let it drop. You don't have to hold it up. If it drops, let me see where it is. We're going to let it go. Okay. Oh, yeah, you want to stand right here? You can hold it like that. I don't want to choke you. Okay. So this is what the enemy sees on us. A target. His main desire is that you never reconcile with God and don't come back to the Father. So now those of you that have those items in your hand, I want you to begin to start throwing them at this target right here. Y'all know who you are. Hit it. Hit him. This is what we go through in the world. That people begin to throw things at us and it affects us. So you can stop right here. And you can see, okay, oh, he got you right in the center of your heart. Sometimes our children know exactly where to get us, right? So these are things, even though he was born with this target, after a while, these things begin to penetrate our heart. And they begin to affect how we live and how we behave. Like triggers, right? Things that have traumatized us during our life. So now what the Lord said is, sometimes we're walking around with these people thinking that they're our friends and they're actually the ones throwing the darts at us. So we have to begin to realize who we're around, our circle. Sometimes we call them our friends, our homies, our BFFs. And unfortunately, sometimes we even call them our brother and sister in Christ. But they're throwing darts. So what the Lord says is don't think that because someone goes to church and knows the Bible, that they were sent into your life by God. Because the enemy has soldiers set up everywhere. So 1 Peter 5 and 8 says to be sober, be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So he's always looking for that target. Amen? Amen. So what does sober mean? Sober means to be free from the intoxicating influences of sin. And to be vigilant means you're going to be prepared. You're going to be alert, watchful, wide awake. You're watchful against the subtle devices of the enemy. So when these children are being dedicated to the Lord, this is the first step that we're saying, no longer does the enemy have influence over you, but we're dedicating you back to God. That's important for today. Amen? Because we want you to realize that you're not fighting against flesh and blood. All those people that threw the darts, it wasn't the flesh that was doing it. It was the spirit behind it, right? The enemy. So Ephesians says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now here comes the other part where I said I would need six volunteers. I need six people to just step up in faith, like you won't have to say a word, I'm just gonna give you something to hold, that's one. Remember, it's supposed to be a 10 minute demonstration, it can take 10 minutes for six people. One, who's next? Thank you, for number two, I'm gonna give you something to hold while you're standing there. This is the first, you gotta stand right here. In the first. I need a second person to step up now. You're number two. That's beautiful. Step right next to the D. S. Put this to the side for a moment. Who's I? Yes, I do. Absolutely. You might have to move down so we can stretch this word. So stand over here. The D, move it down. E, S, I. Okay, the next we want to end. Who's end? You? All right. And the last one is the Y. Here you go. Huh? 
my hospital down, she's going to be right there. Okay. Can someone know, who knows what this word is? Destiny. Now, if you're looking at that, you think I don't know how to spell, right? I do. Something's missing, right? So when you're born into this world and you're trying to fulfill your destiny, something is missing, the, 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 that um, void, right? And we know it's Jesus that's missing, right? Yeah. But what do we do? We're starting off with this D and this E. The devil wants us to stand for, step up DE. He wants us to stand for a destructive end. That's his plan. Awesome. Awesome. Because he's roaming about whom he may devour, right? John 10 and 20, 10 and 29 says, the thief come not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So now D and E step back. I want the S-I-N to step up. What does that say? Sin, right? Romans 6 and 23 says the wages of sin is death. We get caught up in the world. See, poor Julio, when he was born innocent, he got all that stuff and junk on him right now. So sin is tempting him to go the wrong way. To never accept Jesus, but to fall into the temptations of this world, right? So what do we do if no one speaks life into us? What do we do? We begin to try and fill that gap. I need where the, where the missing piece is, I need you to slide over just a little bit. I got some random letters here that I pulled down. I'm going to let the Holy Ghost flow with this one. D-E-S-I-N. Step right there. Something needs to go here, right? So I'm searching. I'm feeling unfulfilled. I'm feeling unhappy, wondering why, right? So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to try and fill it with this letter. Does it look, did I, did I do it? This is gender identity crisis. I'm trying to find my authentic self. So I'm trying to fulfill my destiny by changing my gender. All right, now I got this letter here. Maybe this will do it. This is relationships and religion. Trying to think that religion is going to save you in good works and skipping over having a true intimacy with the Father. So what's missing? How are we gonna escape this fate, this destructive end? This apostle, this is where I need you. She's gonna come and put the right letter in. Right where it goes, in between the, the S, right after the S and the I. Yes, that's for the blood, right? The blood of Jesus. So now, D and E step up. Once Jesus enters the picture, this turns into a desired end. Amen? No longer destructive. That T comes in, and what did it interrupt? I want you to see this. It interrupted sin. Amen? That cross came in and interrupted sin. So now, guess what? I and M, step up. This is how you get in. Because that T, Jesus, came in to fulfill your destiny. Now you got to wait into the kingdom. Amen? Because no man comes to the Father but through the Son. Amen? You can't fulfill your destiny and skip over Jesus. So once again, when you're being dedicated, you're fulfilling this you fill it in this gap right here. Amen? This is the first step. So I'm not a prophet at all, but I know I heard the Lord this morning say to tell you that you're a destiny changer. And every time that you dedicate a youth, you're changing a destiny. Amen? You're, you're doing the first step from to come back to Christ. Amen? So this is, let me see, let me follow my notes now. I have Jeremiah. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. That's that desired end. Amen? The NIV says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to 
prosper you. Amen? This is for the youth. Plans to prosper you. Not to harm. And plans to give you a hope and a future. This world is looking mighty bleak. And it's not showing the youth a hope. But in God, there's a hope and a future. Amen? Hallelujah. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but through me. So you're changing your destiny today by being dedicated unto the Lord. Amen? No matter how small, how young, how old. Because this is not just for babies. Anyone that's disconnected from God needs to be rededicated. Amen? This is not an age limit on this. So now, S, step up. This S used to represent the beginning of sin. But now, after you've been dedicated and returned to your father, it represents your shield. Amen? Hallelujah. Now you've got some protection. So Julio, I want you to step back to the front. And when you get this shield and God is with you, he begins to start healing your heart. And begins to, can you hold me, sis? He begins to start taking these darts off of you, right? So that the effects are not felt anymore. He's beginning to clean your heart up. Amen. Hallelujah. This is what coming to God and being dedicated to God does. Amen. So now, not only is that the case, but now I'm going to give you a shield. Amen? So I want you to cover that target with that shield. Amen? So now, what I want you to do is throw, throw, a, throw something right there. Right there. What happened? Before it penetrated his heart, right? But now he has the shield. Amen? So one thing God wants you to also know that when you become dedicated, this is for the ones that are able to walk and talk, that we're not just dedicating them and leaving them because they need instruction afterwards, amen? How to use the shield, how to protect their heart. Okay, the scripture says, above Proverbs 4 and 23, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows out of it. When you damage a young person, when you speak death into them, you're infecting what comes out of them. Their actions, how they behave. They're not just acting up for no reason, amen? What we're witnessing is evidence that they've been damaged some way. So we gotta know how to get them back on track, amen? And dedication is a good start. That's a good way to start. Ephesians 6 and 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith. It says, where were you are able to quench all of the fiery darts of the enemy. So not just some, but now you're able to quench every dart. It doesn't matter who's throwing them, because now you're protected. So this entire demonstration was done to let you know the importance of you having to accept Jesus. It's not an option. Amen? And to give you a visual, a visual representation of what's taking place today. This is the dedication right here. The destiny is being changed. We're filling in the void. Amen? And that is the end of the demonstration. I pray that you got a good, you know, understanding of what's happening and it blessed you. Amen. God bless.